number eight of rehab training. Today's shoulders and arms. My split is back to my old split. Been able to train to full failure this week. Last week was like just about almost there. And uh, you know, pretty much warmed up now. My rotator cuffs are warmed up. Wanted to do a little, uh, little class, a little lesson right now because I get a lot of people that question, why do you do these range of emotions? Why this? Why that? And, and you know, it, unless I do this, you're not going to understand. And foreign police comes out and they fucking complain and they have the worst delts ever, but they complain about my delts. So what I do is take this little light dumbbell and I'm explain something to you guys now. Now a dumbbell, the way it works, works with gravity. It goes up and down. It doesn't move back and forth. It doesn't move on an arc. It moves up and down. Okay? Gravity is how the dumbbell works. Now, when you hold the dumbbell in front of you, from here to here is sideways. It's an arc. There is no tension there whatsoever. Not until you get to about here. Now, if you look, the dumbbell is straight up and down. Gravity is starting to hold that dumbbell and pull on it. When you get to here, it starts to arc back the opposite way. The way it arcs back is the trap engages and pulls it back up like that, but it pulls the weight off of the side delt, pulls it on the trap. So from here to here is where you have the most effective range of motion that engages the side delt as the dumbbell is only used by gravity. It can't be used on an arc like that. And anything else, all these stabilizing muscles come into play, and that changes the way the movement works. Again, this is why faster gains faster results, faster progress. Why? Because I'm training optimally for how these body parts work. It's the same thing with biceps. I mean, today's biceps later, but if you look at the dumbbell, people are like, oh, at the bottom, at the bottom. From here to here, there is no tension there whatsoever. There's nothing on the bicep. As soon as you hit here, the dumbbell, straight up and down with gravity, you're gonna feel that to about there. Once the arc starts to happen again back here, to even get it to your chin, you have to rotate your arm forward. That's your front delt taking all that weight off there. Now you do feel the burn in your bicep because the front delt, the bicep is actually inserted under the front delt. So you're going to feel that burn all through the bicep by lifting the front delt at the same time. So what I consider proper form or optimal form for a bicep curl is from about here to about here until you start to lose that tension and back down inside that range of motion. Now a lot of people may say, well you need a full range of motion. Why would you let the joint take the weight in either direction and take the tension off the muscle? It doesn't make any sense, and especially since I blow past you guys results wise and progress wise and you're still complaining about how oh, it's not done right well that's why so hopefully not everybody understands why it's only been two years i've been on youtube before i had to finally explain this i guess so we're gonna hit failure today with about the 40s I'm still going a little bit lighter than uh than i was in the past but i'm trying to protect that rotator cuff could i go heavier yes and i gotta try to make the weight feel heavier than it is yes and i'm sure you've heard people say that stuff like that before too Remember, from here to here, nothing. From there, You notice as the muscle fails, the range of motion actually gets shorter. You have more and more muscle fibers that are firing, but more and more muscle fibers that are actually failing. It feels good to be able to train a failure again. All right, next movement, second movement for delts. You're going to notice that I actually isolate first. I am going to do presses later, which it's funny. I'm doing behind the neck presses, which some of you will be going. Aren't those dangerous? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people dangerous. You know, Kevin Lavroni actually used to have me do them behind the neck, and he was doing like 405, 495, 500 pounds behind the neck. I always was like, I don't know, I don't know. This is just probably because people tell you that it's not good to do. But when I do front presses now, because of the injury, they hurt. When I do dumbbell presses, they hurt. Like there's a range of motion I can lock into, but the range of motion is actually a behind the neck press on a Smith machine. It feels perfect. There's no pain. I still feel the delts get simulated. You can't go very heavy, but at this point, who cares? You know what I mean? Like you don't need to go super heavy to maintain what I'm maintaining now. So it's weird because I just kind of threw them in there one day. Cause I was like, you know what? When I'm doing dumbbell presses, I feel like my arm is way back. Let me just get in the Smith machine and see if I can lock into place. And sure enough, it worked. So we're gonna hit rear delts now. This is my favorite movement for rear delts. I love this. It's uh, the reverse cable crossover. I'm gonna try to get as many reps as you can. This one really burns your front delts too. Like you'll notice as you're doing this, like your front delts and traps, your biceps, everything starts to burn with it as your shoulders start to fail.
Oh, no. Oh. Okay, alright. We're gonna start off with, well, not start off, we're gonna finish off here with presses with 20 pounds on each side, which doesn't seem like a whole lot. Well, actually, it's not a whole lot. But that doesn't seem like a whole lot. It's not a whole lot, but it's definitely enough that I can feel it stimulating the shoulder, get the, the delta fail. Everything's about like isolation right now. There's really no need to be trying to move, you know, outrageous poundages and stuff anymore because I'm just going to get fucking hurt. I'm get too old, too banged up <laughs> to be able to do it. But for some reason, it does not bother my shoulder like regular pressing does. So, you know, if you're going to do train with an injury, you got to train around it. you got to find things that don't hurt it. So this is just a weird one that I found. Usually this would hurt everybody's shoulders. If you had good shoulders, you know, healthy shoulders, it would mess them up. But for some reason, it doesn't bother mine. stay inside that same range of motion, that mid-range. When you extend the arm fully, for some reason people don't understand this, the joints take the load. Although the, my, the muscles are actually isometrically contracted, the tension is actually on the muscles. It's on the joint. When you drop down into the bottom of it too far, you can actually feel the pec pull at the top, which is another big thing. Like If you're inclined benching, you can activate the front delts by doing it with what people consider proper form more than the upper pec. When you're doing delts, you can activate the upper pec more than the actual delt itself if you do what people consider proper form. I think the whole proper form thing is good for beginners to be aware of their body. But there comes a time where you can actually screw up a movement and be training something more that you don't even think you're training, like the upper pec when you're trying to do delts. So it comes with the that comes with time, education, and more consistency in the gym. And over time you're gonna learn how to move these things around a little bit. And, you know, I mean, hands down, if somebody's new to the gym, they came in here with a problem with their shoulder, they're not gonna try to do behind the neck presses. Somebody with time and experience in the gym will say, let me try it and see how it feels, because I might be able to actually shift around. First time I tried it, it was a little weird. You can actually shift around and feel where it doesn't hurt anymore. Then you can train around your injuries. Biceps, so we're gonna do barbell curls today. We're just straight bar. This week, arms get trained twice. Monday and today's Friday. So when I, my rotation comes around and I have arms twice in one week, Monday what I'll do is the occlusion training, which is a lot lighter and fail on that one set with the, the occlusion training. And then on Friday when I come in, which is today, I'll go a little bit heavier, time under tension, but compound movements. So that's where we're at today. So we'll start out fairly moderate light. We don't need to do a whole lot of weight because we're not throwing the weight around with time under tension and making sure that the muscle takes the weight and we're not swinging it around with our joints. <sighs> Notice I stay in the range of motion, so there's nothing at the bottom, there's nothing at the top, it's all that mid-range of motion. Finish up arms today with uh, close grip bench presses, which I haven't really done any flat benching at all since the shoulder injury. Actually, it had been a while it was like, since I tore my pec. Last, it was 2013 I tore my pec, right? Halfway through 2013, so I've just been staying away from the flat, but you know, using the Smith machine locks you in the range of motion, and obviously I'm going to go lighter on a close grip than I am on a regular bench press. So I gave it one set, it feels okay on my shoulder. I mean, of course I feel a pull, but I think I'm gonna feel that pretty much for the rest of my life. It's not gonna, you know, completely be gone. So we'll go back to the basics for triceps today too. So we got 135 on there, which with the Smith machine, it's not that much because it's just, you know, people will lie and say that's what it is. It's not. So we'll see how many reps we hit with this. And uh, actually it's feeling pretty good. My elbows don't feel like they're gonna fall off. So. Oh, this guy's making a face back there, go, just bench already. Famous last words. Feel pretty good today. Then he tears a muscle. Ha, ha, ha. 
totally feel that when I go in anywhere. That's it. Week eight is down in the books. We'll start week eight, uh, week nine next week. Little by little, one workout at a time, one week at a time, we're getting stronger again. Who knows? Maybe you could even get stronger than before we got injured. How awesome would that be? <laughs> Here, you're shaking your head. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is the BioS3. Anything is possible. Bicep away. <laughs>